All right. What's up, everyone? I have pinned down Rene Rodriguez, which is harder to do than ever before. Uh, the man Sorry. is speaking all over the world. Uh, what is it, like a million TikTok followers now? Like some stupid number? Is it that a million much? now, yeah. A million. One million. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I actually had my kids uh, forward one of them to me as like, isn't this your friend down? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, you know you're big time when, like, uh, <laughs> college kids of your friends are, like, uh, follow you on TikTok. So pretty cool, buddy. Uh, congrats on all the success for a day. Thank you. I, a lot of it is to do with you and this community right here, which is why I always will say yes. As, as long as I'm in town and I'm by uh internet the answer is always yes brother so i know i know the role that you guys played and the role you played so forever grateful and we're just beginning to this is just the beginning yeah no it it really is uh we have both you know built platforms that are just influencing more and more um professionals and more families uh so so let's let's we kind of net out a, a really important conversation that Ray a and i we had on a weekend a couple of weeks ago and we're like, man, we, you know, we, we were just talking, catching up. And before you know it, we're like, wish we would have recorded this. And, and so we, first of all, we see a lot of mortgage and real estate professionals step it up and being the local news. Like they're, they're smart. They're paying attention to what's happening in the news. And then they're bringing that through social media to their local markets. And that's awesome. I mean, that is absolutely what we need to be doing as a mortgage and real estate industry is is being positive, constructive, useful news for realtors, um, consumers. But but we also saw like there's an opportunity. You know, there's 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 more busyness than business on social media. Um and we just we, <laughs> that's a really good way of saying that. Yeah. And so we we said, hey, let's have a conversation around how to go from, hey, that's a great national news headline to leads and loans. So Renee, I'll, I'll, i I kind of teed it up. Why don't you share your perspective. If anyone is watching this live in Facebook after hours, Renee and I will check in every now and then. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, there's good more content on this topic coming. So put your questions and comments below. So, so here, here's, this is the foundation. I think if you're listening, watching this piece is we have to, this is obviously just a difficult market. It's hard, but the, I want to want to put some perspective on that. And what does difficulty mean? Difficulty means that it's just harder to get a loan. Okay, that doesn't mean you, it's impossible. So there's a question of hard. Difficulty, work work amount, uh, effort, et cetera. And, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. So, all right, so let's set that aside for just a second. The thing that we have to realize right now, like I, I sold cookware door to door. Everything else that I've sold, usually there's a huge price gap between what I'm selling and what other people are buying. Even my speaker fee or Amplify or you know cookware, it's there's always the market never really is ready to spend money. You know, even in personal development, it's really rare. People are you're gonna have to make a pretty tough sale to get somebody to spend a, a good amount of money. And so, if right now the, the choice that I want I'm asking everybody here to make is, are you made by the market or are you making the market? And here's what I mean by that: if your business is highly affected by the market interest rates when i say highly affected it means that you feel like it's done that means just by definition the market is making you so it's like if you last year last couple of years you did your best ever my response off uh, in uh, quite honestly is so what so did everybody everybody did and that's awesome but some people did exponentially better some people did their best year some people had this exponential difference and but i also know people right now that are having some of their best months there are not that many, but there are some that are having some of their best months. They're making a market right now. They're market makers. And to do that, there's two choices. One is order taking skill set, which would be, as I define, a, facilitating a transaction that would have happened anyways, and basically vending machines. Or somebody who's a sales professional, which is somebody who uncovers value that is unseen. And there's only one way to do that, and that's through presentation. And so Trust Engine is all about a being a presentation tool, by the way. That's that's how I look at it. One of the reasons I love it is because I, I'm big on presentation. Best presentation tool, Trust Engine, Mortgage Coach. And so you can't avoid this kind of market 
and skip presentation. You just can't. You have to be able to present value. And so part of what we're talking about here is this concept of how do you turn national news into leads and loans, right? How do we take the news and turn that into a presentation that creates the reason why people would move forward with you in some way, shape, or form? And sometimes forward is just to a next step. So let's get really clear on that and what that means. It's just moving to a next step in the process. This in mortgage, it's not traditional selling in the sense that it's not like you're not pulling out a sales order and getting a close and getting them to write a check and swipe a card right there. You've got more of a complex sale, one that's more relationship driven, more that it's multiple decisions that are minor, minor incremental movements towards that. And then once you get some bigger commitments, like say taking out a full application, um, taking a uh, pulling a uh, authorization to pull a credit report, all those types of things, those are bigger commitments most of which don't require a cash outlay. So there's still not much skin in the game. There's an emotional skin, right? Because I've, I've kind of made a commitment towards you, so I feel obligated. But a lot of people are finding they're losing deals to somewhere else. So that's that's a different topic. We'll get into some of that. It's a different issue. And so when we're thinking about this whole idea of making the market and how do we get people to move and make incremental commitments, we have to get in the mindset that I don't want to be made by the market anymore. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to affect you, but if it's killing you right now, that means that you are fully, your, your future and your income is decided by the market. We have to shift that. And so first, let's begin with a choice. I want to make the market, means meaning I have to uncover value that's not seen. That means I have to engage in presentation, meaning taking somebody who doesn't believe into to believing. Now, to do that, we have to understand there are five commitments that need to be made first. If someone's going to do business with you, there's five things they're buying off on. And there's a certain sequence to those five. And your client is always going to try to change that sequence. You have to stay clear on the sequence. And this is why controlling the sequence of events in a sales process is probably the most important thing a sales professional can do. And when a pro enters the room, we actually love it. We love when a professional enters the room and guides us through a difficult, complex process because we know we're in good hands and Quite frankly, we don't know, we don't want to know everything. We want to be in the hands of somebody that knows better than us. I love it when I'm in a professional uh, with a professional when it comes to food. Somebody that knows the menu will be like, you know what, I got this. Okay, this is your place. All right, we're all we're going for a ride. You know, if you go to eat with Dave, he's like, hold on a second, guys, I got this. Mind if I order? We're like, Dave, you got it. And you don't order wine when you're with Dave. Just let Dave order the wine. You're always better off, right? And so you, you know that you're in good hands, and most of us enjoy that. So how do we create that same? experience. We got to control the sequence. One first thing is we got to buy off on ourselves, right? I want you to write down the last name, mix it, M-C-S-I-T. A really easy way to remember this. Mix it. The first thing people are going to buy is you. Do they like you and trust you? If they don't buy off on you, meaning me, then th the rest of the four don't matter. Like I got to like you and I got to trust you. And some would say that you got to be, you got to be seen first, right? Amir, our good buddy says it's, you have to be before no like, and trust, you have to be seen then known then liked and then trusted, right? So he's big on that scene, which is great. And so that's all true. But if they don't like you, they don't trust you, the rest of the four don't matter. So me. Second one, the C would be the company. A lot of people don't realize that you have to know your company story. People are going to say, I like you, I trust you, but who do you work for? Well, me and my buddies are getting together and pool the money together to get you the loan. No, that doesn't work, right? You've got to be backed by something that's solid. Remember back in the day, if you were to say, I work for Enron, we would question you right? At WorldCom, we would question you. Whamu, we would question you. Lehman Brothers, right? The company matters. And, and right now, especially with the amount of, amount of companies that are not doing all that hot, it matters. And you have to be able to tell the story. That story creates the comfort that whatever you're telling me, there's somebody that can keep your promise. And so it's oftentimes an unconscious need in a box that needs to be checked, but you need to do it. Now, if you here's a side note, a hashtag, Learn the company story of all your referral partners. If you can tell their company story, they're going to love you being around their clients because you're going to be able to reference why they are so good. I used to learn every single real estate company and brokerage shop their story. I can talk to you about Keller Williams, go toe to toe with Keller. I can talk to you about uh, Century 21, Remax, uh, you name it, uh, Sotheby's. To, I can tell you their stories. Why? Because I want to be able to go toe to toe and have a conversation and show that I'm interested in what they're proud of. Each one of them has something that's really different. So sell myself, sell the company. Sec thirdly, you're selling a solution. They're asking the question, does a solution solve a problem for me? So to do that, you got to 
one, define that there's an actual problem. This comes into the understanding of the importance of problem definition. I, I just worked this week with some investment bankers of an extremely large organization. I'm talking about these guys deal in the billions with a B. And we're helping them come up with their pitch and how they pitch. And one of the first things that we work on is what we call problem definition frame, meaning if you're offering a solution, whether you should buy this company or you should divest of this company, we have to, or and let's just say we're talking to buy. Well, let's, let's create the problem first. Let's really put a finger in our pulse on what's the problem we're trying to solve. What are we solving for? We're, if you're buying a company, you're solving for something. And so if I'm buying a house, what am I solving for? Maybe it's net worth. Maybe it's more memories. Maybe it's because I, I just need a, a place to live. There's, there's, there's always an X that we're solving for. And that's the problem definition. And so you've got to be able to solve the solution is only as valuable in context of the problem that you're solving, right? And so if there's a problem to be solved, then solution makes sense. If I don't understand there's a problem, you're just selling me something that I don't need. But if I need it, it's there. Like if I had a bandaid, I said, Dave, put this on. You'd be like, dude, don't, don't stick that on my head. But if you was like, hey, Renee, you, you got a big cut on your head, which I do actually, right? A big cut. And, I, and, and, and I'm like, what? I got a cut where? And I'd see the blood. I'd be like, and you show me a bandaid. I'd be, I'll give you 10 bucks. Give me that bandaid right now. Boom, solution. But I got to know I'm bleeding somewhere. There's a problem definition that really needs to be articulated. And by the way, if you notice what I'm doing, this is presentation. Most people don't present anymore, except the top producers. They present. They walk them through a process. Here's what it's like to do business with us. This is what we're seeing in the market. There's, here's who I am. This is our brand. And by the way, your personal brand is part of your presentation because it, it did a presentation for you before you showed up. It showed up to your meeting before you did. And it's going to stay long afterwards. The question is, what's your personal brand saying? So now, you... I like you, I like the company and the solution solves a problem that I have. Thank you for defining that problem. And that solution makes sense. Uh, how much does it cost? Which is the next one? Investment. Three parts of investment. One time, the other one risk, and the other one's money. You guys aren't selling money. I mean, you're selling money, but you're not asking for money. It's about time and risk. And the potential of lost money in people's fear, but you're not asking for money. But you're potentially putting me in the risk to lose money. So you got to be able to solve and create comfort around no risk. And so that question of what's the risk and how do you solve for that is where we're going to go here in a minute. I'm going to give you a really simple way of doing this and how to use news and statistics to do that. So then now the next part, I like you, I like the company, solves my problem. And you know what? It's worth the risk. Eh, but I'm going to wait the market out a little bit. That will be the last one, which is T. It's timing. That is where majority of deals are lost. And where I've spent the majority of my life understanding is how do I get somebody to act now? That means that you have to articulate the cost of waiting. You have to really articulate. If you've communicated a value, you have to equally communicate the cost of inaction. Now, you're perfectly positioned in this business to do that. What does the TCA do? It shows the total cost analysis of what's going on. It also helps you understand the cost of waiting. Because that value that you see in the TCA can only be achieved if you act. And that means the lack of acting, that value goes away. But you have to be able to articulate that and create an emotional loss to that. By the way, that fear of loss of something valuable is the greatest motivator. Fear is one thing, but it's, the, it's specifically the fear of loss of something valuable. Your presentation is what makes it valuable. The statistics are should, would help you create the reality, not just fear mongering. The reality is if you don't act, this is what's going to happen. So I like you. I like the company. Solution solves my problem. It's worth the money, time and risk you're asking me to spend. And I see why now is the time to buy. So those are the first five that we got to resolve. And by the way, Dave, feel free to chime in. I'll just keep going. So now so how do I, I do I, that? Please. So I, I do want to chime in because I, I just really want to make sure I, I've been interviewing so many loan officers lately. And I've been interviewing a lot of people that are doing, you know, 18 plus loans. I interviewed Michelle Castle, you know, about an hour north of Dallas, two straight months, 21 loans. Uh, you know, I interviewed uh, Sean Kaplan out of Nashville. Uh, he's, he doesn't want to say he's killing it, but he's got a very profitable branch. He's creating incredible content and he's closing 18 loans. And he was also telling me how he just, recently generated 300 applications that turned into 60 loans. So guys, wow. people are doing business in this market. Um, just some some other data, just kind of going back to perspective. So, so yeah, there was a time when 
the number of loan officers between doing between 100 loans and 200 loans a year was 31,000, almost 32,000 loans. Uh, there was a time when there was over 6,000 loan officers doing 300 loans a year. By the way, that time was 328 of 2022. Um, but guys, today, there's still over 1,000 loan officers in America doing between two and 300 loans. There's still 7,303 loan officers doing between 100 and 200 loans. And there's about 14,000 loan officers doing 60 to 100 loans a year. So, so people are doing business. And then there's a lot of people that are doing busyness. And, and so I wanted to just really put an emphasis on that. And every, there's probably, two, there's more than two things, but two things that are relevant to this conversation that the people that are actually doing the business in this market, every single one of them is uncovering what is unseen. Like, like literally, I do not think I have talked to anyone that doesn't like check that box. They do it one-to-one -one, and they're doing it one-to-many. And, and they're, they're telling the news in ways, the ones that are generating leads from social media, they're, they're not only, you know, starting with something national, they're taking it to something personal. So I just wanted to emphasize that. And then there was one other thing you said that I wanted to really emphasize, um, that the people that are winning in this market are having a completely different experience than, than the loan officers that are not winning in this market. They're, 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 they're delivering advice to consumer. They, they have a greater level of confidence, like they know they're going to make it because they have these skills. So I just want to make sure y'all are taking notes, you're paying attention, and, and Renee is really going to bring it home here in a few, that, that this market will define the next five to 10 years of your business. The people that are winning, they're upgrading their skills, and, and the, the next five to 10 years, once we get on, the, once we get to the bottom, we're not at the bottom yet, but we, when we get to the bottom, like the folks that are upgrading their skills, and they're doing everything Renee's talking about, like it's going to be an amazing um, experience for them. Uh, th those numbers are staggering. I mean, there is business happening out there. Now, this is not designed to make you feel bad, right? This is, this is designed to say, okay, hold on. Maybe my current mindset is not working. And what if we could get you to do one more loan a month based on this? You may not get to 300. That's okay. But if you're doing 12, can we get you to 24, right? That's just one more loan a month. If you're doing, you know, 20, can we get you to 30? And whatever it is, just think about that incremental value. And maybe I think so to, when you're truly a sales professional, you're looking for the little advantage that one that will give me a percentage difference increase. If I, if I can, can I, can I just get from one, you know, three closes per 10 presentations to four or maybe three and a half, because that accumulated over time makes such a huge difference. And so we're trying to up the, the conversion ratio of everything that you do. That's really the goal is how do we up the conversion ratio of every single one of your activities, whether it be making booking appointments, whether it be closing, you know, getting people to, to commit to you. And we want to make improvements on all those pieces. So let's go right into how do you take news into to media and um, how do you take news and turn them into loans? So, so there's one, and by the way, this is literally me going like this and choosing a, a something, right? I'm just picking some piece of news and saying, this is a good reason to talk to a realtor or somebody about, or this might be really good for me to uh, share with somebody, or it might be just a reason to say, hey, have you heard? That creates an interaction. And when you create an interaction that is value added, the likelihood of some step moving forward is very, it goes up. It, much better, by the way, than um, like if you're looking to get bit by a shark and you're on the shore, I'm going to tell you the percentage of you getting bit by a shark. It's zero. But you want to get bit, get in the water. Okay, so let's, let's, we got to get in the water on this stuff. And so we got to have a reason to meet with people. And so I'm going to, I'm going to share this one here. And so the, the scenario, I want you to think about this. Let's just, let's just create the scenario of somebody is looking, they don't know if now is the time to buy. They're concerned about the interest rate, right? And maybe they're, they're waiting. And so I literally, this was something David Childress sent me uh, uh, a little bit ago. And uh, around the cumulative house appreciation. Okay. Oops, wrong button. There we go. There we go. The cumulative house appreciation by 2026. This was a prediction. And they had 
a, pa- a group of panelists that were considered optimists, and then they had a group of panelists that were considered the pessimists, and then they combined those to, to create a number. And what they found was the optimists said that was, by 2026, the cumulative house appreciation was going to be about four, increase about 45, uh, 46.5%. Wow. Now, the combined average was 26.8. And the pessimist said 10.3. So now, those of you who know Amplify, the tie down here is this is what this means to you. This is what it means to me, at least. So if I'm talking to a customer, I say, look, you're, you're thinking about buying a home. I said, okay, let's, let's talk through that. Here's what they're saying, right? And this is another big piece that I want to talk about is we have to learn to differentiate between two things in this transaction. And this is something that dawned on me recently. There is a difference between a good time to buy a home and a good time to finance a home. Those are two different things, which is why you have real estate and you have mortgage. Buying a home, financing a home. The research research is clear. This is an amazing time to buy into a home. And that's determined by our home value is going to go up. So right now, great time to buy a home. Like phenomenal time to buy a home. But you're confusing that with it's a higher interest rate right now. And and I say this because I say higher, higher than what should be always be the question. Well, higher than what you're used to. Well, we're used to two, three, and four percent. Well, I hate to break it to you. I don't, I'm not an expert here, but I'm pretty sure that's not coming back for a while, if ever. At least not something worth waiting for. <laughs> it's not coming back in a time that's worth waiting for. And it's it is as frivolous as saying, well, I'm not buying Apple or Tesla because I didn't buy them when they were a dollar. That makes no sense. Yeah, I didn't buy them when they were a dollar, but I know people that are making millions, if not billions, buying those stocks way long into their term than they weren't a dollar. And waiting for that, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Those days are gone. So it's not the interest rate that matters. It's the where it's going and the value that's being created and that, that difference that matters. And so let's remember, you feel that it's high or your customers and people feel that it's high because of the comparison. Now, of course, we're talking refi markets. We're not talking about that stuff. But here's the thing. If you find yourself making excuses based on the things that I'm selling, that's the problem. You're defending the wrong thing. You're defending something that you shouldn't be defending. We have to be able to make a case no matter what the market is. That is your job because the interest rate doesn't matter. What matters is it's our homes going up. Now, if home values were going down and you try to sell a home, now we got an ethical problem. But then, you know what? We've got a good enough history to know that it's always been going up. There may be a slight dip, but it's always going to go up. It's always been up. And so I think we're ethically okay and morally okay by selling our asses off through higher interest rates. And so think about it from that perspective. Is it a good time to buy? Yes, we just showed you. Even at the worst case scenario, you're going to be a 10.3% increase. That's if you're completely a pessimist. Worst case scenario. That's actually not even the worst case scenario. You know what the worst case scenario is? Is that this is what I would tell the client. Is the worst case scenario is, is that we get you into this home now and interest rates go up. That's the worst case. But you'd thank me because I got you in at the lowest point that you could. Right? You'd thank me. But that's still the worst case. Because the best case scenario is I get you in right now and interest rates go down. See, most people say, well, I should have done this. I said, here's the crazy part. I am loan officer, speaking for you, and paid to tell you interest rates are lower and we can refinance this deal. But you're still in the game of real estate. Well, values are going like this. I manage this little thing called interest rate. So the moment that it goes down, I can come in and help you out. That's called mortgage planning. And I watch it. And I have this little technology that tells me, bing, hey, it's ready to save. Isn't that convenient? So go enjoy the home. And I'll tell you, let me manage interest rate. I wouldn't put you in the home if I didn't think it was going here. So the question comes in, are you in the mortgage game or are you in the net worth game? I think you're in the net worth game. And you have to be able to talk that way. Because now, let's, do, let's take another statistic. This is more news. The value, the net worth of a homeowner versus that of a renter. Okay, I don't have that slide here, but I can pull it up. If, if Dave, why don't you talk for a minute and I'll pull that slide up. I'll pull that, that research. I'm going yeah, online you, to find you, it. Yeah, well, I, I do want to do a really clear distinction. You know, the going forward in the mortgage industry, I mean, this is not just another year in mortgage. Like seismic shifts have taken place. 63% of all uh, mortgages in America, um, people that have mortgages are at 2 or 
and they're never going back to two or three. Like we hope they get into the fours again. But by the way, 83% of all mortgages are two, three, or four. And maybe they'll get into th the fours again, but it's not going to be like the refi wave is going to be all the loans that have been done with rates 5% or higher. But the, 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 where you said mortgage game, and I'll say net worth game, like going forward in mortgage, loan officers need to be great at future casting the net worth gained for families by buying now. So if you're talking to someone that wants to move up, now again, it has to be someone like, I've outgrown this home, or you know, we could afford a more expensive home, we want that home. You need to be able to show them and future cast to them, hey, you should still sell this 2% rate and move up because look what that will mean to your net worth five, 10, 20 years from now. Or if it's someone that actually can't afford to rent out the home they're in and move up, it's gonna be all around, hey, look, you can do that. You qualify to do it. Look at your net worth three years, five years, 10 years from now by taking this action. That's what realtors need. They need mortgage professionals that aren't just in the mortgage game. They're in the net worth game of helping families build wealth with real estate and accelerate their financial freedom point. So, I mean, that is, it's going to be like that for the decade. I would just push everyone. You, you need a lot of new skills. But what Renee is teaching right now, skills of presentation, skills to go from, hey, here's some news, to here's some leads, to here's some loans. It's never been more important. One more key concept, Renee, just to throw out, I've been talking a lot about it. My entire career rates have gone down. They hit the bottom. And speed to lead has been the single most important um, principle, skill, capability, habit. Um, it's no longer the single most important thing. There, there's something that is re that you need to elevate and it's speed to need. Like you still need to be there, but you need to be able to address the needs of the consumer. You need to be able to help them because they all have problems. They all have questions and you need to even anticipate the needs. Like you need to have your data monitored. You need to be, un be predictive with the needs of the consumer that again, uncover what is unseen. If a family has equity and you know it can be optimized, you need to be the one reaching out to them and say, hey, family, you need to optimize. If there's a family that just graduated, had a kid graduate from high school or college, you need to be, oh, did you know that you know, you've got enough equity that you could help your, your kid buy a duplex, triplex? And, and then you need to future cast. Like in three years, if you help them buy this, that would have paid for their college education. And in you know five to 10 years, they can either one, sell that and buy the home of their, you know, that they want, or they'll be a millionaire. They can hang on to that and be an investor in real estate. So guys, speed to need is a new principle, skill, habit that people need. And um, Renee, it's your turn. <laughs> I love uh, speed to need. I love that. I, I love, I love it's, it's urgency. It's urgency. I love that. There's a, there's a sense of urgency who can get there. Yeah, and there's a solution. There's a problem and there yeah. was a solution and there was uncovering what is unseen guys. Those are the skills going forward of the people that are winning and the people that are getting market share. I love it. So let's go back to this whole thing. So are you in the net worth game? So uh, Here's, here's another piece of news that we got from Keeping Current Matters. By the way, big fans, David Childers, Steve Harney, two oh, of my favorite people on the planet. Right? It. I just interviewed oh. David a, a couple days ago. Um, folks, I'll have an interview coming into our YouTube channel any day now. Uh, so keep an eye. Uh, David just killed it. They've, they've always been valuable, but they are even more valuable in today's market. Keeping Current it, Matters. It is. You guys, this is just a tool you need. And <clears throat> I... <laughs> Oh, I, it's by so, the way, it's, I love that they've gone from national to local. Like now you yeah. can actually get their help with, hey, here's some national news. Here's some local. And then yes. you need to make it personal. And guys, that's where we come in I with the total that. cost analysis. I, that 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 let's I want to end on that that global, national, local, personal transition. That is such a powerful concept. So I want to give you one more news to deals. 
So we talked about this net worth conversation. By the way, you should be. By the way, news to deals is a pretty good headline. When we push this onto Facebook, we might news to deals with Rene Rodriguez. Yeah. And and what I'm hoping is that you guys are watching this going, dude, Renee doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. I can do this better. Good. I hope you do. I Because you can do it better than me. I'm just giving you a structure. And you know a hell of a lot more about this stuff than I do. So I want you guys to take this. I'm just, I'm the, I'm watching all of this. And this is how I would say it. So another scenario, right? And it could be a continuation of the previous scenario to, to somebody's on the on the fence of buying, or let's say you go to a renter. Let's just, let's just go to a renter because there's plenty of renters out there and renters are paying a lot of money right now. So people ask you, what do you do? So well, I'm in the, let's just say, actually, no, let's even do this. Let's say you're, you're talking to a renter. And what would be the question you would ask? I'd ask this question. I said, hey, excuse me, Mr. or Mrs. Renter, is growing your net worth important to you? And then, then I would ask that question at the beginning. The net worth, what do you mean? Okay, so guess what? I would have a great conversation. Well, net worth is really the accumulation of your assets. It's what your total value is. And some people have net worth of a million plus 10 million billion. Some people have a negative net worth if they're in highly in debt. But net worth is a pretty important measure that you should have. Are you, is that something important to you? Most likely people will say yes. I said, well, have you seen the statistics on the net worth of renters versus a net worth of an owner of a home? Most likely they're going to say no. I said, well, here's what here's what it shows. The average net worth of a homeowner is about $255,000. And the average net worth of a renter is about $6,300. Just by owning a home, you put yourself in a position to have 40 times or 40 X greater net worth than that which you're renting. What this means to you, tie down, is that if you continue down this path of renting, you're not even in the game of net worth. Now, here's the good news. What I can show you is most likely, and this won't take very long, we can sit down and ask you a few questions, look at what you're currently paying, and see what kind of home you might qualify for. And here's the best news. It's not about if you qualify, in the way that I do things. It's about when. Now, you might have credit issues. You might not have cash. And so all that means is we put you on the bank, on the path to bankability. I just made up that word. We're going to make you bankable as soon as possible. So, and now here's the best part. If you're scared, what if you were just scared of nothing and a little bit of fear held you back from growing your net worth? My goal is to help you find the truth. I have to ask you a few questions, show you some pictures, and it can show you what you can afford to buy now. So that should simple conversation there with a beautiful graphic that's clearly laid out here, 135,000 of those assets are other assets, but you got 120,000 in a home. I mean, this is super simple and super clear, but the, the big sort of pain is if you're on that renter side, holy shit, I better do something about it. And so people are saying, where are the deals right now? Well, let's see. If I just had that slide, I would be figuring out how to get into every apartment and stopping everybody going in and out and saying, excuse me, is net worth important to you? No, nothing. So, okay, so great. Have a great day. Okay, next one. Hi, excuse me. I don't mean to bother you, but um, is net worth something important to you? Then I do that five to 10 times and maybe realize that that's not the right question based on their response. Then I go, excuse me for a minute. I go, may I ask you a question? I said, I'm kind of doing a survey here and I'm doing it on renters. Is, is net worth a conversation that happens in your life? Uh, actually, no, we, we, we talk about it, but we, you know, it's a little bit hard to understand. I said, you know, it's interesting. Well, I'm in the world of helping people build their net worth. And I would love to be able to have just a five minute conversation with you to see if I can help you build the net worth. And worst case scenario, you would confirm that you're on the right track, or maybe there's something that I can do to help. And the good news is, is I don't sell anything that I would actually need any money from you for. So even if you loved what I'm talking about, I couldn't accept any money from you. See what I'm doing here? And so that's the process of, you know, people say, let's well, cold calling. God damn right it is. And it's awesome because I'm going to where people have need. And if you believe that you're doing something good and you're letting people who you know rent, then you need to be out there selling and telling them and say, you can do better. And I want to show you. Oh, but I'm scared somebody might say no. Well, then I don't know what to tell you. This is, if this is a tough time, <sighs> then you got to ask yourself what you're doing and why you're doing this. This is a tough time. So what? 
Since when did hard be matter in the in this pursuit of greatness? There isn't anything that is easy. I did this last week, David, literally two weeks ago now. I went through and I said all the things that I want, right? I've been on this great health kick, but I, I want about another 15 pounds. And I'm like, man, this is going to be really hard because, you know, I'm kind of in this plateau area, 245 pounds down from 307, I'm like mm, in this plateau area. So it's going to be hard. And I go, okay, well, I want to reach these certain financial goals. Well, that's going to be really hard. Well, there's certain career goals and relationship goals, all of them. This is going to be really hard, 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 hard. And then I went a line. I go, okay, so if I don't do these things, what's it going to be like? Well, okay, if I don't reach those financial goals or the health goals, that, that's, that's going to suck. That's hard too because uh, I won't live as long. <laughs> okay, so then financial goals. Well, that sucks because I won't be able to do certain things that I want to do. Okay, well, I went through the list and on both sides of that list, it was hard. And as cliche as it is, choose your hard stuff. This was sort of a realization that I can't escape hard. I can't escape it. And so if I can't escape it, I better build a great relationship with suffering and hard work. And I better start enjoying the fruits of what that is. And especially if I'm working hard in the pursuit of helping people, holy shit, that's a great thing. And that's what all of you watching this have an opportunity to do. You can go out there and work your ass off and help people. If you're not finding loans, then go find them. And for your social media marketers that say dead, cold calling is dead. No, you're using that as a cop out for your fear of doing it. I'm not saying that social media is bad. Trust me, if somebody has a million followers on TikTok and almost 200,000 on Instagram, I love, I love my, my social media. But it didn't make me rich. It's giving me more opportunity, yes. But not everybody has that kind of following. And you don't need that kind of following to turn those relationships into something. But you also can't use social media as a cop-out to the work that we need to do, which is called selling. So don't use that as a cop-out. I love my social media people. Love you all. But don't enable the fear. Don't enable and don't, don't downplay the importance of making that phone call. It is still critical because there are some people, and here's the thing. If somebody, and I watch this with group dynamics all the time, some people will seek out an opportunity and seek out betterment while some people will wait and hopefully some guy, somebody walks by and convinces them that they, they have to be better. But if nobody comes by to convince them, they're just going to stay as is. Well, what if somebody doesn't show up with a solution that could change your life and you didn't seek it out? And you found yourself 20 to 30 years from now, five years from now, saying in the same exact position, or maybe even worse, thinking that if you would have just put a little effort and you could have gotten out of it, that's a sad place. And so I don't buy that stuff. Like I, if I believe in something, then I have an obligation to be the best communicator of that value that I can be. And I believe in what all of you are selling. And I think all of you have that same obligation to be the best that you can at communicating it. Take the news turn it into an opportunity so that people can see, holy shit, there is value that I didn't see before. Be the one that carries that torch so that they can go, thank you so much for getting us in the game. So yeah, I'm passionate about that. Yeah, I love it, Renee. So let's go into a, a wrap up mode. I really appreciate you um, being here after hours to pour into this community. And, and just to give everybody a, a formula, guys, anybody who's been through Amplify, if you haven't been through Amplify, you need to, but you learn something called frame, message, tie down. And, and some tie downs have a call to action. And I want to see more folks taking the great social media that you have out there and taking it national, going local. And remember, Keeping Current Matters has both local and national now and then making it personal and focusing on the net worth. Like, you know, depending on the art, on the piece of content and the piece of news, um, if it's someone who's renting, let me localize and personalize this for you on whether you should, a, a buy now analysis or Renee said, a buy when analysis. Uh, if it's someone that's a move up buyer and it's a piece of news where, hey, you move up buyers, let me run an analysis so close with that. Because remember, it's not about how many likes you have or how many followers you have. It's how many leads you're generating. Now, sometimes it's about followers. Sometimes it's about likes because you're trying to build audience. But I want to see more people turning that, that social media relevance into leads and loans. Like every lead, every loan, every basis point matters more than ever. So Renee, before we wrap up, um, I want to make sure people know a very important event is 36 days out. 
and counting. Uh, you know, by the way, guys, if you want to get 56, count, 56 days out, 56 days. What did, what did I say? 36. Oh, scared. You scared the crap. Out that's of not me. even dyslexic. I'm, I'm really looking at your <laughs> website right now and it says 56. So yeah, 56 <laughs> days out. I'm looking at the counter. You could go to meetrene.com and just give this community. Cause I, I'm going to be at this event. Uh, I want to make sure that there's as many people from the trust engine mortgage coach community as possible at this event. I mean, usually we're, there's a lot of us, uh, you know, why, why should we come this year and give us a little, give us a few, I don't know, describe it a little bit so that everyone knows what's up. Well, th this is one, if you haven't been there, I mean, I, I'll play for your short little video. You're just going to take a peek at this. I'll play this for, for you. It. Yeah. I'll just play this for you. It's, it's actually just a little peek. Previous years, in case anyone was wondering. Who's that guy? So that's, that's last year's. And it's just a really good group of people. I mean, some of the top producers in the nation, a lot of people you go see it speak at other events are gonna be even in the audience. We've got some amazing people I'll show you. In fact, by the way, we got our new website, check out our new website, meetrene.com. And you'll see up here, it's 56 days in counting for the event. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok right here. But this, let me just tell you about just, we've only announced three of the speakers so far. I've got some really cool ones coming. Uh, you can watch that video there. But we've got right now, Neil Ford, who's one of the top 10 most decorated creative directors in the world and just an amazing storyteller. And if you haven't seen him on social media, you might recognize some of his videos. He tells stories and he is just incredible storyteller. And so that's Neil Ford. He's going to be there. Another person who's going to be there, Jefferson Fisher. If you don't know Jefferson Fisher, he, just to give you an idea who he is, he's a trial attorney. Now, Ed Milet, which most of us know, has about 2,000 posts and has about 2.6 million followers. Jefferson, let's see what he's doing. 248 posts and 2.5 million followers and growing. He just started this and every single one of his posts is viral. It's crazy. 1 million, 3 million, 2 million, 1 million, 2 million. I mean, every single thing he does. He's speaking there. He's also going to be part of our mastermind group. Hey, He's Renee, going to be there. Renee, real, real quick, guys. If first of all, all these speakers are insane, but I, I get a lot of wisdom from following him. I actually follow or forward to his post to my kids. Like it's, it's just common sense wisdom, and it's just amazing how this guy has gone from, you know, an attorney to a social media celebrity. And and trust me, guys. He's, he's not just getting likes and following, he's getting business. Yeah. Uh, it was, I love that guy, Renee. He's, and he's incredible, and he's so incredibly humble. He and I started doing before he was as big as he is. So he, he's, he's just on my podcast. Um, I mean, you can, if you wanna watch his podcast, go to my meetrene.com and slide down just a little bit here and you'll see him right here, uh, there. And I'm gonna give away who our next one is, but I'm gonna go back to back to the back to the top here because I'm gonna do it here. Rachel Lambert, she's the uh, CEO and founder of Brain Code Center. So she owns the largest center of, of neuro feedback and brain mapping in the country. And so we're gonna be looking at some of the science behind uh, what professional athletes do and what's happening in our brains and how we can heal and train our brains to be more more effective. By the way. The way we look at the market is a function of the brain. The way we approach things is a function of the brain. Whether we procrastinate, it's a function of the brain. So this is getting into the nitty, nitty gritty of it. Now, the other one, I haven't announced it, Dave, but so damn it, I'm gonna announce it first with you. And I wanna, I wanna ask you this question because I, I gotta find it. What do, what do um, Eminem, let's go with this. What is M, what is, what is Eminem, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, um, Ludacris, Sony, Samsung all have in common. Massive success, uh, tremendous influence. I, I, mean, I don't know. They have this guy by the name of Clinton Sparks. Ah. And 
Clinton I wouldn't Sparks. Agree. Yeah, Clinton Sparks is a social is a new uh, excuse me, a music mogul, 75 80 million records sold, multi-platinum, Grammy nominated. He helped start Shade 45, which is Eminem's channel on on uh uh, uh at Sirius XM. He's just announcing a huge partnership with a magazine that both you and I love, where he's going to be the face of that magazine. He's become a dear friend over the last uh, couple months, and he is going to be doing one of the coolest breakdowns on stage of one of the number one songs that we would all know and how it came to light and how he, when he first presented just the beat, that Ludacris looked at him and said, what else you got? And he was so angry that he went back and got all the acapella songs from all the other artists and put the thing back and gave it back to him and said, now look. And then he'll show the whole music video. It's a, it's just a cool thing. But what a great message around the importance of context and framing. Delivering a message, the beat, without the full context was huge. So he's going to be there. And we've got some other ones that, that we're going to be out, uh, announcing. The, the, my trainer, personal trainer, who's the personal trainer for The Rock, Zach Efron, Sylvester Stallone, some other great people, uh, Josh Brolin, Emilia Clark. He was in the movie The Terminator. He's going to be there. And I'm working on some... Some pretty cool ones. And guys, by the way, I'm not into getting the the speakers that you see at all the other events. They have mastered that. I'm not going to go get Ed Milet. I love, in fact, I'm going to be with Ed for my third time here in a couple weeks. We're, we're flying to Dallas or flying to Salt Lake City together. I love him. I'm not bringing those guys to this event. You've seen him at Neil's event, which he freaking killed it. You've seen the Jesse Etzlers. I'm, my whole goal is bringing people that you never knew really existed that will blow your mind with tactical in real, real implementable ideas. These are people doing it and you're going to get to hang out with them. So this is going to be different. This is going to be fun. I want to see as many of you there. And so I just created this as we were doing this, a discount code for everybody here. And this is our, this is our lowest price, by the way. This is our lowest price. So if you go to meetrene.com and up at the top, you click on right here. Don't wait. Register now up at the top here. You click there. Scroll down. You get to watch the tickets. Get your VIP, new VIP experience, whichever one it is. Our VIP, you get to meet and greet with the, the speakers and special guests. We get an exclusive VIP dinner the night before where a lot of speakers are going to be there. VIP lunch, VIP entrance. We're also going to have reserved seating for you. And you get a year's coaching with me, by the way. So anybody's in that, you're going to be spending a year every single month in a group's coaching session. You're going to upgrade a swag bag, exclusive merchandise. You're also going to get a photo op with me. You don't need to be VIP, by the way, to get that. Even our general admission will, we'll, because we all know that that's not worth that much. But with other speakers, and you're going to get a signed, signed book. So there's a discounted price in here once you click your name and, and ask for it. But when you get there, you're going to use the code MC25. MC25. That's going to give you 25% off. Now, what does that mean? I, I just was telling people this. I got don't make people do the math. So it's going to get you. So let's let's see what what is our pricing at right now? Um, because I, I don't even know what our pricing is right now, Dave. Do we? Let's see. I'm going to click on this, and where is it? I'm going to click on the pricing. I'm going to add my name. Okay. I don't know because I don't want anybody texting me. All right, so that should take me to where the pricing is. There it is. Boom. All right, boom. So general admission, four ninety seven. That is our early bird. It will go away. MC25. Click that. That'll disc. Wow, it's only 300, 300, 372 bucks to show up. That's just kind of stupid. That is our cheapest price out there for our mortgage coach trust, trust engine family. Go in there, MC25. Let me know or go VIP. VIP, I think our price is a little bit lower. You're going to get 25% off of that and get all the cool stuff. So, yes, MC25. Go to meetrene.com. All right, guys. So, Renee, the innovation that you're bringing to the space right now when it needs innovation most is just exceptional, unprecedented. Anyone that's been to this event knows what an amazing event is, not only what happens on stage, but who is in that room. The networking is amazing. Renee, have I've said this from stage a lot, but have I have have you heard me talk about Warren Buffett's three eyes? I haven't. I love that. I, okay, I think so, I remember something about it, but I'd love to hear it. So guys, this is not me. This is Warren Buffett. 
And this is advice for every C-suite lender right now. This is advice for every loan officer right now. Uh, Warren ta Buffett talks about the three eyes and how markets are formed. You know, this is how markets are formed. And the first eye is innovators. Like every success, every market starts with the innovators. Um, the next eye is imitators, you know, people that are following. And the third eye are idiots. Not me, mm. it's just Warren Buffett. Those are the three eyes. So guys, in, in 2020, in 2021, everybody had record-breaking success. You did not need to be an innovator to win. Going forward in mortgage and real estate, it's an innovator's game. And, and you just saw what Renee is putting together. He's putting together an innovator's event. I mean, he's going to have innovators on stage who are leveraging modern technology. They're leveraging social media to get attention, to gain influence. And then Renee's also one of those people that understands that attention and influence is only part of the game. Like leads and loans is equally important. So he understands that. He knows that this event is going to be a do not miss event. If you see yourself as an innovator, if you want to be an innovator, I will be there. Uh, can't wait. Renee, any closing thoughts before we wrap it, bro? I just hope to see. Let's let's create some some comments and some questions in this post. Let's let's get some people commenting. I'd like to see this hit everybody. I I truly. By the way, guys, it's hard to host an event. It's expensive, so any support is great. Great is greatly appreciated. I promise you, we're going to create something that's memorable. I promise you that you're going to get way more than your money's back, money's worth. If not, I will give you your money back. So this is me saying, I'm asking for the business. I'm asking you to come to Dallas. Come with us. Come hang out. Let's really, truly surround ourselves with the best and the brightest, becoming one of those, and have the right conversation so we fix our mindset and get ready for killing it for the next rest of this year. So we'll I hope to see you everyone all in Dallas 56 days from now. Please do what Renee said. If you bought a ticket, say, I'm in. I bought a ticket. If you have a question or a comment or a big takeaway from this conversation, put it down below. Give and us a lot me. of likes. Give us a lot of feedback. Rene Rodriguez, so good to hang out with you, brother. Love you, man. Love and you, love brother. Love the office. All right. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. This is a wrap.